First thing you need to do is save your tables from MS2. Okay, this is 303S. Save to as. Save. Okay, I've done that. Okay, okay, off and take the MS3, uh, MS2 out. Okay, and we need a Phillips screwdriver. Do you have a number one uh, can? What? Phillips. Number one Phillips? I haven't seen mine since. Uh, what's the name of that place we were at? I haven't seen it since then. But uh, I think I may have there's a the, There's the box of bag of bits. Okay. Good. So we have to take the cover off. Oh. This will come in handy for the um, nuts. Thank you, sir. Probably first off is yeah, pop that out, take that end plate off. on there. See, I've only got the end plates, I haven't got the case half with me. Yeah, slip the USB in and then um, that's good. And other end plate, because if you change the other end plate, then you can put the case lid back on. Do these always ship with the end plates? No, that's that's just what I've got. You need to normally you buy the MS3 and you buy the case as a separate, a complete separate case. The MS3 kits will obviously come with the right case. Right. Seems like there's plenty of clearance there with the right case. Yeah. It's mainly for this end here to give extra clearance for the MS3 export.
bottle and uh, one screw from the I'll say it's the bottom actually, that probably doesn't matter. Did you use it? I didn't have it in there. It's not critical on when you have the clamshells are all tight. This one is probably okay because it's anchored by the DB. The uh, fresh air case design there. Uh, in the old days, we used to call that flow through ventilation. Well, there we go. Okay, so we can put it back in the car. Now, to get the tune back on, you want the key on. As a feature you can use in flood clear mode, it won't prime the pump or squirt any injectors. So if you hold your foot on the throttle when you first key on, it'll keep it from doing anything before you set the first settings. That should be on. I didn't hear the relay, so I think we're yep, good. that should be okay. So, it's picked up that it's changed, got a new code in there. So, we created a new project already for the MS3. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, so. It's alive. If you now load in the MSQ you saved a moment ago, it should put most settings in place. So, yeah. Yep. Sorry, the rain. And these are the errors. So that's a couple of them. Yeah, there's a, probably a few hundred there from new features we got. Okay. Okay, you can close that. And what's important? Um, that's still, still loading the MSQ at the moment. If there's a bit of rain there, should we just move a bit forward around here so you're not uh, going to get rain on your laptop? Yes. <laughs> will, it, will it burn through the uh, onto the deck? Right. Well, it's got a long cable, it's still in the garage. Exactly. Let's put it on the back of the RX-7, I guess. So that's burned all the data now. Key settings to check are um, on fuel settings, check the injector dead time because that's a new method, so you need to put in whatever your dead time was. Um, that's on the MS3X outputs. On the main board injectors, you use, want to put in whatever you're using there. So that is, this is where I care about. Yeah. The curves are equivalent to the old curves, the, the old hard-coded values. So if you're using the standard voltage correction, they'll be the same. Okay. I'm using PWM current limiting. This okay. Is yep. We're using. Yes. Okay. That looks good. It's fine. Okay. So you can burn and close that. You want your sunroof closed? Please. Bob, I'll check on. Uh, it's, it's, it's manual. It's crank. Just crank it down and kind of clockwise. Check on basic load settings. Um, just check on the basic ones. Just check on the engine sequential to make sure we. So that's on standard fuel sequentials off. Be happy that stuff's there. Firing order is not going to make too much difference. We may as well set it up now for the future anyway. Okay. Next probably major one is uh, on ignition settings, ignition options, wheel decoder. So this is combining the ignition settings and the more ignition settings and all the wheel decoder settings onto one page. 
So toothed wheel, yes, um, you're not using a cam input, you're using the LEDs for spark using a single coil, oh, 60 good. minus 2, correct angle, um, yeah, the spark hardware, that's the key one, that if you're using the MS3X, that would be one you'd change there. The rest of it should have come over okay. Yeah, that, that looks good. Okay. Oh, this is not right. This is the, is this the original latency? Yep. I thought I had a hundred there. Go for it. Well, I mean, you, you may want to recheck that because of the chip being fast. You might need. You probably don't need as much latency. Maybe maybe twenty or thirty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Close. Yep. What else? Ego settings might be just worth checking as well because that's the method on that to change recently. If your settings. I'm running open loop right now because of the sensor's got just, an issue. Just check what's uh, on there anyway, so yeah. So have you, uh, have you got narrow band or wide band? Wide change band? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you've got authority of zero, so it's open loop fine. It's on the correct port, normal ego. These are giving you options that if you've got multiple, up to eight, you could apply them each correction to each cylinder. I see. Makes if, sense. If you did. Or, so or I, if I had two in each header. Yep, you could say secondary, that. Secondary, I could have assigned banks, cylinders to each. Absolutely. Okay, so burn that. Yep. Anything on the um, rear of the car as well? Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a box there that needs to go. Yep. And my. Yep. That's okay. I that's good. think that's maybe. Um, oh, that needs to go. Yeah, that's probably uh, probably not great. That. Uh.